Over here are the solutions to the equations, the standard forms of the circles and ellipses. So in this first one, is it of course recognizable as an ellipse because the coefficients on the x squared and y squared are different, meaning they, they undergo different amounts of stretch. But to get it in standard form, we need to set it equal to 1 by dividing by that constant at the end. So we're going to get x squared over 25 plus y squared over 16 equals 1. So what we need to be able to get, of course, is the center, which is at the origin. The major radius going with the x is 5. The minor radius going with the y is 4. And the c value, where the foci are, that's going to be the difference in the squares. a squared minus b squared is c squared. So that will, of course, have to be 3 if you work that out. And we'll show that in the graph later on. All right, so we got our standard form. Like I said, I would show you the graph later on. It'll be much more um, of an illustration to show us where our center vertices and foci are, as well as the length of the major and minor axes. So again, axis is two times the radius. So these values are gonna get, those are our radius values. All right, if you take a look at number two, it's a circle. How do we recognize it as such? Because x squared and y squared have the same coefficient. The only work we need to do here is to complete the square. So x squared minus 10x plus some special number plus y squared equals negative 21 plus that same special number. In order to get that special number, remember that is half the, the b term squared. So that's going to be half of 10 or 5 squared, 25, right? So here we're going to get that that means the radius squared is 4, thus the radius is 2. So our standard form equation, x minus 5 squared plus y squared equals 4. We have a center at 5, 0, and a radius of 2. Now realize in the instructions it asks for major, minor axes, and foci, but circles don't have those. So we don't have to worry about that here. Okay, so number 9, again another complete the square exercise. So we'll factor out the 9, x squared. We'll factor it out of the x term here, so that would be 4x. Right, and we're going to add a number. We're going to factor out the 25 y squared, factor that out here, we've got plus 2y plus a number. And then, of course, we're going to move that 164 over. So that might be a pretty large number at the end of this, right? So we're going to add both of those numbers here. Make sure you can see all of that. Well, there we go. That was better. All right, so how do we figure this number out? Half of 4 squared. So that's going to be 4 times 9. That's going to be a total of 36 we added to the left side. Similarly here, half of the 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. I'm writing the 1 in here, but if that's the case, then it's going to have the 25 distributed to it, so that's adding 25. Now, how do we take this and turn it into standard form? Right? We're going to go ahead and say that's going to be x minus 2 squared. This is going to be y plus 1 squared. And now at the end of this, this, this is actually equal to 225. So what I would do is divide both sides by 225. So I've got a 225 underneath here. That means I'm going to have a 9 here. I'm going to have a 25 here. All that equal to 1. So we're going to get A equals 5, B equals 3. And I think that means C is going to have to equal 4. All right, focus a little bit. Thank you, Mr. Camera. All right, so we have all those values. We have our standard form as well as our values for A, B, and C so that we can then go later on and create an accurate picture for that. We did four in class, so moving on to number five. Recognize that it is a circle. How so? Because they have the same quadratic coefficient. So we'll factor that three out to help us complete the square plus 3y squared, right, and then minus 2y plus some number. And of course, there is no constant on the other side, so we don't have to worry about that. What are we adding here? Half of 8 squared, so 16, half of 2 squared, so 1. But I added a 3 times 16, which is 48. I added a 3 times 1, which is 3. So it's not going to be a pretty circle, but it's going to be a circle nonetheless. Let me tilt just a little bit. Yeah, okay, so I've got 3 times x plus 4 squared plus 3 times y minus 1 squared equals 51. All 
right? Divide everything by three. Hopefully now you're also seeing that it's a circle. Now, if I had not divided by three, but rather if I had divided by 51, you would see that both of these x and y quadratics had the same coefficient or denominator, right? So when you're going to think, well, how does that work with an ellipse? The major and minor radius is the same. It's not an ellipse. It's a circle, a special ellipse, if you will. All right, so we have our center is negative 4, 1, and our radius is the square root of 17. If I can get it to focus and you can see that. Yeah, there we go. All right, last one. I have enough room here. Last one, we're going to complete the square and have some fun there. So I've got 25. Notice I do have to do it for both the x and y. 25, x squared plus 4x plus some number plus 4, y squared minus 10y plus some number equals negative 100 plus both of those numbers. All right? So half of 4 squared is 2, 2 squared is 4, half of 10 squared is 5, 5 squared is 25. So I added 25 times 4, I added 100 there. I added 4 times 25, another 100 there. So a net value of 200, but one of them cancels out. Okay, so how does that move us to our, um, what's under there? Move us to our final equation. I have to leave a little bit out just to fit it all. At least give you guys the answer here. So we're going to have x plus 2 squared over something. We're going to have y minus 5 squared over something. All that's going to equal 1. Now how am I going to get the 1? I'm going to have to divide by the 100 that was left over here. Right? So the 4 and the 25, the 4 and the 100, if you divide those in opposite fashion, 100 divided by 25, and put the answer on the bottom, you're going to get 25 here under the y. And if I do that for the 25 here, 100 divided by 25, I'm going to get the 4 here. So we get our information that A equals 5. That's the major radius. That's, of course, under Y. B equals 2. That's the minor radius, of course, under X. And then C is going to be the difference between their squares. So that would be the square root of 21 in this case. All right. I will shoot you guys a pic of all the graphs so that you can compare these and make sure you don't see any discrepancies and make the connections between the standard form and the graph. Good luck.